Right, today we're going to talk about e-bike batteries, how they work, what you can do to get the best out of them. We'll talk about battery range, how that works, although I've already done a video about that. And battery storage over the winter and how to take care of your batteries. So yeah, let's get into that. So, how do they make lithium ion battery packs? Well, I'm going to show you some images on the screen now. Let, let's start with, they're normally about a AAA size battery that's run in sequence, uh, welded together, or what they call tacked together. Then a BMS is added, and the, the BMS is your battery management system. And then this is added to the discharge and charge port. So the discharge port goes to your bike, and the charge port goes to charge the battery. And basically, that's as simple as I can make it for you. They're not massively complicated. Um, but and again, the way they work is kind of complicated. So batteries are something you really shouldn't go buying the cheapest £200 battery you can find without researching it first. There's a lot of batteries still being sold out there without a BMS. A BMS is what's built into your battery pack to keep it safe. It controls the discharge rate and it controls the charge rate. It, and your charge rate being controlled means that you cannot overcharge the battery. Or in theory, you shouldn't be able to. There's a switch or switch in the BMS that stops the battery from overcharging. Once you go into overcharging on a battery and leave it on overnight, if you haven't got a BMS, this is what starts the, the actual cascade of thermal runway. And you'll normally know if a battery is about to go off because you'll smell it first because of the chemical gas that it gives off. And once it ignites, as you've seen on various videos, they're really hard to pull out. Contrary to popular belief, battery fires are reasonably rare even now. And they're getting rarer. So the batteries that you will find on the bike that you bought are normally, and I say normally because there are some outliers out there where they have caught fire, and this is across all manufacturers, as all, all of them have had fire issues. But what you have to remember is, you use lithium ion or various forms of lithium ion batteries in your daily life within your phones, within your chargers for your batteries, for your drills and everything else. They're all lithium ion batteries. And there's always been cases, especially Samsung, the prime example, Samsung had to recall one of its phone designs because the batteries were overeating. They had to recall every one that they'd sent out. It's not restricted to any other form of lithium ion batteries. They've all, they all have issues. Battery drill batteries go up all the time. And so do cars. And so do cars. Teslas, Range Rovers, they've all sort of had a, an issue with lithium ion battery fires. So it's not restricted to just e-bikes. So now we know that, let's look into what we can do to mitigate e-bike battery fires. For a start off, never charge them in your house. It doesn't matter whether they're charged on or off the bike. It doesn't matter whatsoever. Some, some people will tell you, oh, we'll just remove it and charge it this and do it that and it'll, it'll work that way. Makes no difference. If the battery is playing up, it's playing up. Um, the port's the same. You'll still plug in, wherever you plug it in, you'll plug it into the, dis into the charge port. Um, so it doesn't matter, like I said, whether it's on the bike or off the bike. Never charge an e-bike battery and leave it in the house alone. Um, if anything does tend to happen, like I said, you'll, you'll smell it first. I'll put the chemical smell of the gas that it gives off up on the screen now. You'll smell it first and then you'll know that something's wrong. You'll think, what's that funny smell? I'm charging my battery. Get that battery outside as fast as possible. Definitely unplug it from the charging port. Get it outside as fast as possible. If a battery does go into thermal runway, and you can see a picture of that on the screen now, um, just leave it to burn out. Call the fire service and just leave it to burn out. Unless you've got a specialist fire extinguisher on, on hand, which you can buy. Uh, if you go onto Amazon, you can buy them from Amazon, that especially for these sort of fires. But again, who has one on hand? Well, I actually have one on hand. You've also all seen demonstrations of these e-bike battery bags that are meant to stop the escape of the fire if it does ignite and 
to a certain extent they they do burn through but they do contain the fire a little bit better um they tend to discharge some of the heat to the side of the bag um probably if you've got it in your garage possibly could save your garage when you're charging it never ever charge an e-bike straight after you come back from a large, uh, long ride your battery's already warm and when you actually plug, plug the battery in for charging you're actually adding more heat to the battery so give it a good 20 30 minutes before putting it on charge again let the battery cool itself down does it damage my battery if i let it get to zero charge um yes and no i'd actually try and keep 10 percent in the battery as a minimum um, it doesn't do too much harm again this is what your bms is for this is what stops the battery from sort of like cutting itself out the, the bms is more likely to cut the battery out before it actually runs out of charge well i've got a cheap battery on my e-bike and it hasn't ever caused me any problems what should i do personally i'd replace the battery um, a lot of people ride around with a lot of luck on their on their side these cheap batteries will eventually give way because they tend to corrode inside or have access to water ingress again this causes corrosion on the inside of the battery a decent battery will not let water inside of that battery cell pack which e-bike companies have the most fires well oddly it's not e-bike companies that are causing the fires it's been homebrew kits and whenever you see e-bikes that have caught fire you know these have been built at home the, ch the cheapest common denominator with when it comes to battery pack cost and it's normally what causes the fire they charge them in stairwells they charge them in their houses and these batteries aren't safe sometimes these batteries it's a bit that the, the, the media don't tire they some of these batteries don't have any sort of real form bms in them and your battery management system is all when it comes to e-bike batteries year on year e-bike sales are going up and e-bike uh, battery fires are going down and there's a reason for this batteries are getting safer a lot of the batteries you see in these bikes that you buy from different companies like Engway or Cyrus or Lanka Lazy or whatever, they're getting safer. Um, actually, I say safer, but here's the thing. They're getting safer over time. Engway's latest e-bike, the LE20, actually has UL certified batteries. And these are one of the most safe batteries that they've been tested independently. And these are one of the most safe batteries on the marketplace. So when we look at it, e-bike batteries are quite safe nowadays. Like I said, it's very rare for one to catch on fire. The newer ones, very, very rare. And the older ones that have started to corrode over time have had no battery maintenance. And by battery maintenance, you can actually take these to businesses that will actually check the battery for you, change bar cells and everything else. People just plug them on, plug and play, and they don't care until they have a fire and then it's a big problem. So what do you do over the winter months with your e-bike battery if you're not using it? Well, I normally store mine for a few months of the year. So what you need to do is get your battery charged down to about 50% and then store them. Now, I tend to use one of these to store my battery in. And the reason being is I have multiple batteries that I need to take out the bikes because I'm not going to be riding for two or three months. And I need to store them somewhere in the garage that aren't, they're not going to get frozen overnight. One thing that e-bike batteries don't like at all is super low temperatures and super high temperatures and there's a medium range where e-bike batteries are at, give their best performance but they don't like the cold and during the cold season you'll see your e-bike battery range drop to about 50 percent of what you'll get in say the spring and autumn months you actually go down in the summer months as well you lose range in the summer months e-bike batteries don't like extreme heat so once you get up past 28 degrees, they don't like that. You're going to start losing range. So don't think it's just a winter thing where you're going to lose range on your batteries. And in the summer months is where you're more likely to see an e-bike battery fire because of overheating during in the cell pack. Other good advice, if you charge your, bike, your battery in your bike, take it out once a month and examine it. If you see any swelling in the battery pack, that means the battery pack swelling. And it's dangerous and that means you need to instead of fiddling with it you can either take it somebody knows what they're doing with batteries or you take it to your local recycling center a swollen battery is a sign that the chemical reaction is going on inside and it's due to 
give you a big surprise. So what happens if I damage my, if I drop my battery pack? Well, the first thing I'd do is examine it. I'd open it and try and get the cell pack out of the, in its casing and have a look at it, see if any of the actual cells have been damaged because, or any of the welds have come away. Because as you can see, these are tack pin welded when they're done in parallel. And sometimes these come away once the battery has been dropped or the battery has been in an accident and there's been an impact against the battery. So you need to bear that in mind. In conclusion, let's have a look at this. Don't buy cheap batteries. Don't charge your battery when it's warm, when you've just come back off of a ride. Another thing, don't buy cheap chargers. For goodness sake, they're crap. Don't buy them. Just buy a decent charger. Or more to the point, get in touch with a manufacturer of your bike and buy the charger from them for if you've got a damaged charger. Don't buy cheap chargers off of Amazon. Um, don't buy cheap batteries. You, they'll come unstuck at some point. Diminish the risk with your e-bike batteries by spending a little bit more money. Like I said, the UL batteries on the LE20 that's just coming out that Engway's done, they're LE batteries. They're a good example of what all manufacturers should be putting in their e-bikes. If you're storing it over the winter, store it at 50% charge. And as you saw, I put them in these cool boxes. This keeps the temperature inside warmer than it is outside and it doesn't. And if you want, you can buy these little um, microwave bean bags that you can throw one of them in there and it'll last a week. It's just to take the edge of the freezing weather off. So this also helps you keep your battery healthy. These are all simple little things that you can do to mitigate the risk of any battery fire and keep your battery healthy. Remember, these e-bike batteries are good for thousands of cycles if you look after them. It's just when you don't look after them, you use cheap charging systems. This is when it all starts to go wrong. And like I said, nearly all the e-bike fires that you see, nearly all, I'm not saying all, but nearly all, are fires that have been caused by homebrew kits that have cheap, if no BMS in the battery, uh, cheap chargers, and what do you expect? It's all going to go wrong at some point. Anyway, if you'd like me to do a more in-depth video about battery chemistry and everything else, I think this is all you need to know. I think I've answered all the questions that I've had sent to my inbox. I think this should help people understand batteries a little bit more, especially the battery chemistry side of it. Have a nice weekend, everyone.